If you're putting together a budget and you want a clean way of doing it, look no further than this Airtable tutorial. I'm going to be going into detail about how you can structure a budget database that tracks information across your various departments or divisions, puts it all in one place, keeps it nice and organized for you and your team. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost, and I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we do that, definitely don't miss our Airtable crash course. It's going to get you up to speed quickly and easily with the Airtable database. But without further ado, let's just jump into my screen here and take a look at our corporate budget. Now, you'll notice that this is a little bit more on the complex side. There are a lot of moving parts to a budget. So I'm going to go through step by step and explain why I organized it the way I did. But before I get to that, quick anecdote. A little over three years ago, I was working for a corporation, billion dollar corporation, and these folks were still doing their budgets by spreadsheets. The spreadsheet was sent out to all the different divisions. There were like 15 divisions. They got back, they made it back to the corporate office, and then it was my job to compile those budgets and put them together in a way that made sense. And it was a nightmare because all of these budgets were breaking every single spreadsheet, you know, people mess up the formulas, the macros were broken. So by the time it all got back to corporate office, it was just a nightmare. So by building something like this from the beginning and giving people access to only the data they need access to, you're going to save yourself a ton of time. It was like countless hours, hundreds of hours putting all this data together. And it's just so much nicer to start from, you know, the right place from the beginning and get off to the right start. So anyway, jumping in, we have departments and divisions. Now, of course, this is going to be different for every single organization, but you can still take this logic and this flow that I've built here and make it work for you. So we've got our different departments. In this case, I'm imagining that there's like sales, marketing, ops, and finance and accounting, right? And then we have a direct relationship from that department and division right to our employees. And we'll talk about that first. And then I'm going to come back to the link to expenses at the end. So first we've got that department division and we know who's on these different teams, right? So on the employee level, we have the name, we have their role. If they're, you know, if they're a VP, a manager, or you, know, you might have other roles here. And then of course the reciprocal of that relationship to the department division. So if the employee links to the department, then the department must also be linked to the employee. Now we're also linking to payroll and this is specifically useful in the case where you are bringing in like some sort of project based tracking into your budgeting. So if you are doing a number of projects and that's the majority of your expenses, you'll very likely want to track payroll for each of those uh, projected projects. So that is why we have a linked relationship here and I'll go into more detail in just a moment. Now each person also has an hourly rate or an effective hourly rate. Now, it's very likely that a lot of these people are paid by salary, but you want to make sure that you're allocating proper hours to these projects, right? And so you can key in their hours here or their effective hourly rate. And so if you need to, you can just you know take their annual salary and divide it by 2080, which is the number of hours in a work year, and just plug in that rate here. Now, the hours calculated, this is going to roll up from the amount of information that we plug into the payroll element. So we'll get to that in a moment. And then we're also able to calculate the expense based on that. So obviously just taking, well, what's their hourly rate and how many different hours are we allocating for these people on different projects? So it's obvious, you know, just a little multiplication, what that payroll expense will be. And then we're also linking to the actual uh, expense here as well. And I'll get to that in a moment when we make our way to the expense table. So let's talk about before we get to payroll, let's talk about projects. This is another like high level thing. So listing out all the different projects that you have. In this case, I'm just labeling them one, two, and three. And then we're going to connect to the different payroll for these projects. So we can see when we get to payroll, then we can roll up all of the different connections with payroll for these various projects. And so we can see what the total payroll expense is per project. Similarly, on employees, we had that uh, the total hours, and this is the roll up of all the hours that these employees are allocated to. So in this example here, Nathaniel is linking to two different projects. 
he might have 400 project 400 hours on one project 400 on another his total hours you know projected uh, are 800 right and so that's where we're getting that number so let's take a look at that payroll and what this really is is a junction table now if you're not familiar with junction tables i would definitely recommend checking out our tutorial on junction tables they're a key component to understanding how to build good databases in Airtable. But this is producing a junction or an intersection between our project table and our employee table. And so each of these records is a unique instance of a particular employee allocating hours against a particular project. So in this case, project one and Hira Santos, we're projecting 500 hours or budgeting 500 hours. And we can look up Hira's uh, rate because we know what that hourly rate is and so it's then easy to calculate what the payroll expense would be. 500 times the $30 an hour, we know what the payroll expense is. Now you'll notice that for this particular um, view here, I have grouped by the projects. So it's nice and easy for us to see the total amount on each project. And of course, that is what we're rolling up back at the project level, that total payroll expense. All right, so now for the big kit and caboodle, this is expenses. This is where we're rolling everything together. And the important thing to note here is we're not just going to track payroll at the expense level, right? So this is where things get a little messy. So let's go step by step. So first and foremost, we have an expense category. It may be that we have payroll, but we have other possible expenses as well. Maybe we have software expenses or consulting expenses or whatever the case may be. If you want to add a description for what this particular one is, like let's say here we see, oh, this was accounting software, or maybe we have a cost for uh, credit card uh, fees or, you know, whatever different things we're budgeting for. Uh, these are all things that we can label out here. Now, if it's a payroll expense, we're going to need to connect back to that uh, employee, right? And so for each department, they need to allocate certain amount of money for payroll, but they also need to consider other expenses. So only in the case where it's a payroll expense do we expect to see a link to the employee. And so here, you know, each department can just select their different employees. And then we're able to look up the payroll expense per employee. Flipping back to employees really quickly, we can do this because we've already summed up the amount here for these employees. So in this case, if I'm looking at the finance and accounting division or department, uh, we see that, you know, the VP has not allocated any hours to projects. Uh, Serena here has not allocated any hours to projects. So obviously, obviously this is an incomplete uh, amount. And, uh, and so this would need to be finalized first before we'd have a full projection of payroll. That is, of course, if payroll is directly tied to project billing. So going again into those expenses, we're able to look up that total amount. In this case, we have those four different payrolls for finance and accounting department. And in the case where it's not payroll, then we need to actually enter an amount. And we cannot enter data on a lookup field. A lookup field is a dependent field type, which means it's, it depends entirely on the linked relationship and the logic built into the database. So we can't actually add data on a keyed in field or on a lookup field. So we create a separate field over here called the keyed amount. And here's where we can manually enter something. And then we have our our expense amount, which is just a formula that says, okay, well, if there is payroll, like if this is a payroll expense, then I'm going to take the payroll expense that exists here in this field. But if there's not, then I want to take that keyed amount. And so this way we are able to bring everything into one field for expenses. So this is the, the, the true field that is calculating our expenses. It's going to either take from the payroll field or from the keyed amount field and put everything in one place. Now, the only part about this that I don't love is that we have to then make sure that we have the proper department here. So in the case of an employee payroll, we know what department that employee is assigned to. And so we can look that up, but that does not build a directly linked relationship between the employee and the department. So we have to either do this part manually by grabbing that department and then making sure that we have that direct link to that department for this particular expense, or we could build a script using the Airtable scripting block that does this for us. But the reason that we need this direct link is because when we go back into our department, we want to be able to roll up all of the different expenses 
that are attached to that one department, and using the lookup field wouldn't allow us to do that in all cases. Now lastly, you might say, okay, this is pretty great, you know, I can shrink down a department and, you know, just look department by department. I can see what the different costs are within here. So I can quickly see $63,000 is the marketing payroll, $2,000 is the marketing, you know, budget software amount, etc. But you might want a little more insight, especially some high level insight about the company in general. For that, I would recommend breaking out a couple blocks and building some, you know, high level dashboards for you to peruse. In this case, I built a pie chart that's just looking at the total expenses and breaking it down by the department. And so I can easily hover over here and see what department is spending the most money. And also you can go department by department. So in this case, I built a specific view for the operations department and I applied a filter that said, hey, I only want to see the department of operations. And then for that, you can build a little pie chart that shows you just the expense for that particular department. So in this case, I'm looking at the operations department here. And by the way, this is done by setting your view to a specific uh, view that you've built in Airtable. And now I can see what the different uh, amounts or budgeted amounts for that department are. So I can see, well, operations is spending the vast majority of their money on payroll, but perhaps other departments look a little different, uh, you know, when we look at their uh, breakdown of funds. So anyhow, this is, again, a high-level way that you can come at putting a budget together in an Airtable database. Of course, every instance, every business is going to have their own unique cases, but I hope this gets you started down the right path. As always, I hope you found that to be incredibly helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we've put together a lot of resources on our website. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will be delivered to your inbox and get you up to speed quickly and easily with Airtable. And if you're looking for something more complex, we do offer hourly consulting and courses and full-blown development. So swing on by and let us know how we can help you further. Look forward to hearing from you soon.